I'm going to show you how to generate spectrograms from your black box data so you can analyze the, the uh, gyro response, vibration, noise, whatever, uh, from your copter. <clears throat> and there are more than a few steps, but none of the steps are particularly hard, so I hope that you should be able to follow this. But I don't actually, I'm just kind of rotely following steps myself. So if you run into problems, I'm afraid that I'm not the guy to go to for technical support. I'm just sort of parroting back things that I've seen other people do. But I'm going to put it all in one place for you. So step one, download GNU Octave for whatever system you're using. I'm using Windows. Download and install that on your, on your system. Step two, you're going to need the control package and the signal package. You can get the URL from, from my address bar or you can just Google search for Octave Control Package, Octave Signal Package. Okay, step three. You're going to go to the command line and... Oh, there was a lot of those. Hang on. <laughs> uh, you're going to run Octave CLI is the executable. When you create the when you install the program, it creates a uh, menu shortcut for the CLI and the GUI, so you don't actually have to do it from the command line like this, but um, for the video I am. So in the command line, you're going to install the packages. Uh, the rest of the stuff you can do from the GUI and is a little easier. The command you're going to use is pkg, and we can see if I do pkg list, there's my control and my signal packages installed. You're going to do pkg install and then whatever, something like that. Uh, whatever the name of the package file is, I, I completely just made that up. So, you know, don't, don't, that, that file name is, I just made it up. Once you do that, it's going to sit there for a surprisingly long time. I wondered if it was doing nothing. So it just let it sit there and finish installing the package. And I believe you need to do them in the right order. It'll give you a warning if you do them in the wrong order and refuse to proceed. So get the control and the signal packages installed. That was loud. <laughs> so that uh, when you do PKG list, you can see them. Okay, that's all you need for that. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to go to black box and you're going to do black box decode the log and that's going to create a CSV file out of the log and And this is the log file, so let me do that. It'll take a minute to finish. Oh, didn't even take a minute. Okay, so now we've got a CSV file from the log. And this is actually, uh, I'm, I'm, I picked Final Glide's log from that video he posted, because I thought it would be interesting to see what his, uh, what his spectrogram data looked like. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to open up the GUI, the Octave GUI. And you're going to open the script file that I'm going to link in this post. And I don't know this scripting language at all, but I just copied this from somebody who posted it on GitHub. And what you got to do is you got to change this file name to be wherever your uh, CSV file was. So hang on a second. Let me, I'm just going to put it in C, C, C colon backslash just to keep, the, keep it simple. Okay, so C colon backslash log o o oh gracious. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, copy paste. Okay, I believe that is correct. And then uh, run, save file and run. And then very shortly after that, your spectrogram will appear. And I paused the video so you didn't have to sit there. It was about 20 seconds while it worked. There's no real indication that it's working. You just gotta wait. And here's your spectrogram. 
<clears throat> so as long as I've got you, uh, I take a minute to talk about a spectrogram and help you sort of see what's going on here. For those who maybe aren't familiar with spectrograms, um, what you've got is the the x axis, mm, the y axis. Sorry, the y axis is your frequency, and the x axis is time, and the color is the intensity of the frequency at that time. So when we see blue or cool colors, uh, we know that there were not very strong, very uh, very much energy at that frequency at that time. So of course here at the beginning, there's no not much energy at all, and that's because the motors isn't throttled up yet, right? Now probably this is where he armed because we can start to see some energy at around say 30 hertz and around say 60 hertz, okay? And then here is probably where he starts flying. And we can see quite a lot of energy down in the sub, say, 20 to 10 hertz range. And that is just the actual flying uh, that the stick inputs, if you will. And then these this stuff up here is what we would call noise, motor noise. And our goal is more or less to get get rid of that entirely. Uh, with the filtering, of course, you know there's a point where you're over filtered and and you've hurt your copter's ability to respond to real world conditions. You know, so uh, but if we were to see like a perfect spectrogram, we would see this stuff and basically nothing, almost nothing up above here. Uh, but of course, that's 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 a fantasy world, right? In reality, what we're going to do is we're going to look for patterns here. So, for example, we can see that. There's this line here, right, of just little bits of orange and yellow. And this is probably the primary uh, frequency of the motor noise. Actually, uh, this may be uh, a harmonic or an aliasing artifact because it's in the 100 to 150, 160 hertz range, which seems kind of low given that for 5 inch props on a 4S system. My hunch is that the actual frequency is off the top of this chart, and we're seeing some kind of a either an aliasing artifact or who knows what. Uh, it would require a person more skilled in signals analysis than me to to really get into this. Um, but you know, this this is a, generally speaking probably a pretty decent trace. In, in, if you recall uh, the post I made over on the black box log uh, thread. Maybe maybe some of you saw it, where I had um, loop time 1200 and 8 kilohertz sampling on the gyro. There was terrible, just red streaks all over this. It was terrible. This this is probably pretty decent. Okay. So, hope that's helpful, and um, happy flying.